A gift is something outside of you that you need to receive. How do you receive it? By faith. Not of works, lest any man should boast. <laughs> that tells you it's got to just be faith. Now, when you get right here to this verse, you get problems because here comes religion. And religion comes along and says, when it says, it is the gift of God, that it is faith. God has to give you faith because if God doesn't give you faith, you can't believe. Calvinism. When you hear people brag about being Reformed theology, Calvinistic theology, I'm talking about people like R.C. Sproul and D. James Kennedy and Mark Driscoll and John Piper and all these big famous people today. They all teach that God, if God doesn't give you faith, you can't believe. And if you believe, it's because God supernaturally implanted faith in you. And they read that verse and they say, it is the gift of God. Now, all these guys like to use the Greek to prove things, but when this verse, they, they run from the Greek. And the reason they do that is that word it there is a, it's, it's, it's in, in grammar, it's neuter. Faith in the verse right before it is feminine. Grace is feminine. Well, if you have a, a neuter pronoun, it would need to modify a what? A neuter noun. They need to match in number, case, and gender. You know that. So if you read the, the way Paul wrote it originally, nobody that read that would think that it referred back to faith because they didn't match. There's what's called gender discordance. Now, people love to talk about gender discordance when it matches their thing. As a general rule, things need to match in gender. Here they don't. So when you read it, you look at it, and you say, well, then what would the it be? You know, anybody that reads this verse can figure what it is. By grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself. It's the gift of God. What's the verse talking about? The verse talking about getting saved. By grace are you what? Saved. There's the verb. There's the action. Where does it come from? It comes from God's grace. How do you get connected with it? Through faith. But what, do you, what does God's grace provide that you, get by, that you get connected to by faith? Save. Salvation. You know what's the gift of God? Go to Romans 6.23. The gift of God is eternal life. John chapter number 4, Jesus told the woman at the well, if you'd have known who it is, you'd ask me to give you a gift. What? Of of life. You know, all through the Bible, the gift of God is salvation. It, the components of salvation, life, blessings. It's never faith. The Bible says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now, if you had to have faith to please God, and you couldn't have faith unless God gave you the faith, what would that tell you? That would tell you that if you didn't believe, it's because God chose not to give you something that pleased Him. That's why you get in the theology, the next step is, well, then He didn't, he didn't love everybody, didn't choose everybody, and didn't die for everybody. And you go, what? You see, you have to get out of the Bible into theology to do that, and that's where you get, get, your, get your mind like scrambled eggs. Now, I'm not going, well, my, I'm, next week we'll talk a little bit about how you know I'll go through some four or five reasons how you can know that that faith there, that the it there is, is the gift of God, is salvation, and that faith is not a gift of God. Faith is something that God allows you to have. It, 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 faith is a non-meritorious sense of perception. There's no merit in faith. You see how he says, it's not of works lest any man should boast. The whole issue here is that it's by God's grace, it's a gift, and you can't boast in it. You can't boast about producing it. Salvation in Jesus Christ is so complete, there's nothing for you to add. Now come with me to Romans 3. Hold your hand here. Here's a verse of Scripture. Anytime you get into one of these arguments with theology, it's good to have a verse that clears it up for you. Romans chapter 3, verse 27. Start in verse 26. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Okay, 
If you believe in Jesus, where is the boasting then? It's excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of what? Faith excludes your ability to boast. So when somebody comes along and says, well, if you got saved because you believe, then you were part of the salvation process, and you were part of it. It's your merit that got you saved. What's that verse tell you? There isn't any merit in your believing. What merit for you is there believing that you're a lost, hell-bound, un unable to save yourself, sinner, condemned to death, hell, and the wrath of God? You see any merit in that? And that because you can't do anything, you trust completely in something that somebody else did. Does it sound like there's any merit in that? That's why chapter 4, verse number 5. Verse 4 he says, 4, 4, Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. You put your efforts into it, you destroy grace. But to him that works not, but what? Well, if you work not but believe, then it's believing a work. Now, you can get that. You don't need a college education. You don't need to know anything about Greek or Hebrew. You don't need a preacher that's done all that. All you need to do is just read your Bible. Faith is a non-meritorious sense of perception. It's me depending on what someone else has done or what someone else has said. Its value is not in me. Its value is in the, the dependability, the trustworthiness of the one talking. You receive the witness of God, it's greater. It works. By grace are you saved, through faith, plus nothing. It's the gift of God. That's why it says, justified freely. I got up this morning, it's my birthday. Last night, my granddaughters have spent the night with us. My wife, she said, what do you want for your birthday? I said, I want a death by chocolate cake. What else is there to want? So last night, I hear the mixer going upstairs. I'm downstairs working, and I'm thinking she's making that death by chocolate cake. I can smell it. And I keep thinking, eventually, she's going to bring me the bowl to lick the, lick the bowl. See, you, you know. And it got to be 11.30, 12, 12.30, no bowl. So finally I said, something wrong here. I went upstairs, and there's the bowl, all clean, spick and span, in the dishwasher. And I said, what happened to my, my icing bowl? My wife says, well, you have two granddaughters. They got to it first. And I said, what is this? And she said, well, there's your cake. Eat the icing off the side. So I did. <laughs> but I got up this morning, and there, there was my cake. And she gave me this little, little, little present. And you know what? I didn't pay anything for that. And I didn't get out my bill for say, sugar. Now, yesterday I did. She said, I need money to pay. You know, I got my bill for out. And I... But this morning, I didn't get my bill for out and said, how much can I pay you? I just put my arms around her and said, thank you. And gave her a kiss. And you know what? That's what you do when someone gives you a gift. You just say, thank you. And then you give them a, you, then you give them a kiss. You have a love relationship with them. By grace you are saved through faith. That not of yourself. It's the gift of God, not of works. You don't have to look into yourself and find the resources to cope. You don't have to look outside to seek a methodology to pay for it. God says, just trust what I've done for you. And that's enough. That's faith. 
by grace through faith plus nothing. A couple of years ago, I was on a conference, and after the, the the Sunday meetings, we went to this very nice restaurant down the road from the conference center to have lunch. Now, because it was a the church crowd was there, there was all kind of other people. The restaurant was full. And we sat at a table, a large table, maybe 10, 12 people sitting at our table. And a table right next to us came in, another 8 or 10 people. And they were having as good a time as we were having. And they were actually making more noise than we were making. And they were a church crowd, been talking about church and about this and that. So we were, we, we were right after they got seated, we were leaving. And so I stood up, and our group was getting rough, and I just walked over to their table, and I said, you guys sound like you've been to church. Oh, yeah, we've been to church this morning. We had a great time. I said, well, is there anybody here at this table who knows whether they're going to heaven or not? Oh, yeah, we're all going to heaven. We've been to church this morning. And I said, well, tell me, how do you know for sure that you're going to go to heaven? And one man looked at me, and he says, well, Jesus Christ died for my sins. And I've trusted him as my Savior. And then I looked at him and I said, and what else? Now that's the question. There's the crunch. What else? And I didn't say a word. That table got quiet like a turkey farm on Thanksgiving afternoon. Just <laughs> looking for the answer. Finally a little lady stood up and she says, well, I was baptized. And another says, well, we just went to church. Do you understand what I was saying to him? The answer would have been nothing. And as soon as you added getting baptized, going to church, paying your bills, treating your family right, giving to the United Fund, don't smoke, drink, chew, or hang with the folks that do, you had all that stuff, any of it. Or you look at it and say, you know, I don't have the ability to do that. I don't have the internal resources to live that life. Anytime you do any of that, it's no longer grace through faith plus nothing. And there's no salvation. The salvation is then when you say, what else? His blood, his blood is all my plea. Hallelujah. They grant sin. That's where it all comes from. That's the thing to trust. That's what gets the job done. By grace, are you saved? By grace, all that God can do for you through Christ. Are you saved eternally, presently? Accomplished reality. Delivered into safety and security in Christ. Through faith. Through your simple dependence upon Him exclusively. That's a wonderful thing. We live, you live in a world that needs to hear that. We live in a world fraught with toil and trouble, confusion, disappointment. You will never have lived in a day in your life with the opportunity around you as it is today to share that message with people that need it in the confusion in which they live as it is today. God, help us to be a lighthouse for that truth. Father, we thank you this morning for your grace, for the privilege of trusting you. And I pray for us here that the reality of by grace through, are you saved through faith, that not of yourself, it's a gift of God, might burn into our hearts and cause us just to rest there and that it might motivate us to share that message with those about us for your glory. There's someone here this morning that that's new to, that they need to make that choice of faith exclusively in you today. I pray that that truth would clearly live in their mind and that their heart would surrender itself to you and trust you alone, who alone can save them. Pass from death to life. We pray for that today in Christ's name.